Hi everyone, I'm James Hassel and welcome to What a Flanker, the podcast series two. My guests today are two brothers who have featured in eight movies together. They're hosts of the podcast Normal, Not Normal. They're of course Oliver and James Phelps. Lads, how are you? Very good, very thanks, good. Mate. thanks for having us. You're both looking very dapper. This is the first time I've, like I was saying earlier, this is the first time I've been out in about three months, so I'm trying to make the effort. Mate, you do look incredible. <laughs> what's, what's, what's with the blazer? I, have to, I always look like the scruffy one that's the problem so <laughs> that's I a place made the size for it do you know what you look at the moment an artiste if I was going to describe an artiste maybe someone that would be seen sitting legs crossed on the side uh, quaffing uh, an espresso mm. yeah yep. just thinking about Sartre or, or, or some French sort of you know romantic street music playing potentially well, I was doing I, I binge watched the, uh, the whole of like, five series of Narcos again and not, I was looking, like I was quite, looking at the, the same thing. Really. Yeah, no, right. I, but I was looking at the moustaches, and I was saying, I said to my wife, I was like, "What do you think of me with a moustache?" Like, Absolutely not. So I'm waiting until eventually I'm just going to get rid of this and then and leave the porno go tash. For the, go for the tash. Yeah. I've never done the, the single porno tash. I, ca- I just can't grow. I, I did a, a play a couple of years ago, and I had to grow a moustache for it, and I just realised I couldn't. <laughs> Like you like, hoping to go through puberty anytime soon? No, 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 I just can't. It just comes in patches. Like it's like a reverse hit, though, wasn't it? It was, bit, like... it was awful. It was awful. <laughs> That's the punchy look, the reverse <laughs> it hit. It was that. really bad. Like, we went to... We were in Italy just before I started. <laughs> and all these press things, I looked like... Oh, just look an absolute mess. Really? It looks really, really bad. So then on the, on the second night, I actually put some, like, uh, colouring on it. Yes, people do that. I got on stage, didn't tell anyone I was doing it, and the guy who I was delivering my lines to just walked up stage because he was smiling so much and he didn't want anyone to see. So then I, was, I, I love that. I've mad. had some. I had some teammates. So, so Tom Wood, who um, plays at Northampton, played for England. He uh, anything he does, he gets like fully into, and he, um, you know, he basically wanted to learn to be a tree surgeon. So he got qualified as a tree surgeon. Now he climbs up people's trees and cuts them down. He like bought a truck and now he became like a mechanic. He, he went to go shooting, started loading his own bullets. Then he went to archery, making his own boat. Like he's like into it, like welding and everything. He decided to start growing a beard. Of course, went into full beard mode, you know, growth products, yeah. dyeing <laughs> yeah. it and everything. Mate, it was incredible. But actually, you know, I've seen stuff on Instagram these kits that people can get it's got like a spiky roller and they basically guarantee you can help you oh, grow really? a, a less patchy beard and they show you a face with like a big guy beard with patches they put this treatment on for a month and by the end of it they've got this thick luscious beard i mean it's great marketing that's a good idea i don't know i mean this is like two days growth already but if you if it, what we're saying is anyone who watches this podcast if there is a beard company oliver Feltz for a for a fuck but bucket load of money will be the face <laughs> of your product i imagine um <laughs> it'll be like you know in the simpsons you know, and homer has that hair, yeah, that um, hair growth and bart tries to put it on his called? face yeah Duralax or something like that, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Apparently, that. Yeah. well listen first of all um to explain how we we, we know each other we actually well, first of all, I'm a huge Harry Potter fan, um, and um, we actually met at the Duke of uh, Giving. Well, sorry, I'll rephrase that. We actually met at Buckingham Palace, <laughs> such a big time way of meeting people, at uh, Buckingham Palace, and we were all working for the Duke of Edinburgh, giving out the Duke of Edinburgh awards. We were all kind of put, put into separate groups to help motivate these people. And obviously, I saw you both there. And actually, I think I can't remember which one of you came and spoke to me, which I was like, excellent. Because if it had been really awkward, I was going to be like, <laughs> hello, lads, James Haskell here. It'd be really awkward. But it turns out you both, you both like your rugby, don't you? Yeah, we do. So we, um, I suppose we've always been, been rugby fans, really, uh, growing up. But actually playing it was never really on the cards, never really wanted to do it or thought we should do it. Well, we, um, no, we went to normal comprehensive yeah. so it was just football, football until yeah. football, that's year it. nine so we played a year of they started then including rugby and that's their third year at school include rugby really enjoyed that and then fourth year that's when we got cast in harry potter so that was no contact yeah. sport that was the end of that <laughs> don't affect the money makers like. yeah, exactly. oh, yeah but my uh, so how we got into i suppose really following rugby is our uh, father is from gloucester and my granddad's, he, he used to have a season ticket at Gloucester many years gone by. So at the time, Gloucester were doing quite well. I remember it was, uh, well, Mercier was playing at number 10, wasn't he, at Gloucester? So they were competing for the, for the title and everything. And went down there, and it was the first time I'd been to a rugby game live. And it was brilliant. It was just so... Well, yeah, but we still we still joke much, about yeah, it though. Like everyone's sense, everyone, that? you know, in the shed, everyone's got the yeah, well, just there. Um, I don't think they ever go. Gloucester. <laughs> yeah, but there was a, it was freezing day, and there was either the guys who had like the short sleeve shirts, just these big farmer guys, or people like me with the woolly red hats on, just yeah. trying to keep warm. And all of a sudden, this bloke goes, "Ear, you in the red hat?" And there's like a thousand people in red hats, and all of a sudden, everyone knew that he was on about me. Oh my god! <laughs> like, Can you shrink a bit? I was like. 
Sorry, I know, but I, honestly, that's ruthless. That that shed, that's when we used to warm up next to it. They'd just be abusing you, like, e or e, or you're like, oh my god, like lads. Or, or as soon as you do the warm up things, there'd be bits of you running in and out. They're like, oh, the hokey cokey. You're like, oh my god, every time. But what what an introduction to rugby though to be it to was, be in there. It was really really good actually. And I remember we were filming um, a couple of days later, and uh, I was chatting with Martin Bayfield because he was Hagrid's body double. Yes, and that we said to him that he went down there, and he was he was telling us some similar experiences in front of them and he said there's just he said he literally saw a man once literally have a fit in the shed and his mate stood and held his peer until he was finished and then just gave it to him and this is like mid-game and half the uh, half the players are going right okay wow but i mean it was a great experience and we've been back many times since um and it's do you get yeah, hassled so when you go back or you, you is the woolly hat turned into a woolly balaclava <laughs> woolly yeah. it's, uh, no, it's all right there everyone's saying everyone's very just it's not really I that think, type of club, really, I don't think. When it's, yeah, but it's, it's normally the, the wives and the daughters and, mm. and young sons who... Uh, yeah, because most of the lads more, can't but... read. Is that what you're trying to say? And then, <laughs> then you know... Uh, and if they got caught watching... Uh, I'm not watching Harry Potter. Yeah, that's Go right, away. Yeah. Got to watch the rugby. Or they, or they try and say, well, you know, we filmed it in the cathedral here. Yes. <laughs> yes, you did, didn't you? Yeah. yeah, so. yeah. There's a, they're like, there's a cathedral here. Like, yes, there is, lads. Um, what... Well, first of all, how are you both? I know we've, we've chatted a bit of shit, but I mean, how's lockdown been for you? Because context is key. For some people, it's been awful. For some people, it's been a re- the first rest they had in ages. Yeah, yeah. It's- I would say I would say the latter. I've you can't say you really enjoy it, but I've definitely not not hated it because it's the first time I've been home for this long in twenty years, and it's just been really great. Of I'm quite addictive if i get into something i get addicted to it and i have to so i got addicted to bike riding i got addicted to stargazing um running every, like i, I so i kept so you're a bit like tom wood like we said yeah, once you're in it you like go full board but are you like that you buy all the equipment so the cycling you were like lycra's um yep. uh, clip on shoes yep. r- super expensive bike pretty much yeah and it was i i, I do i just fight to myself so i get like i don't go for the the big full kit to start with i okay. get like the halfway to see if I like it or not and then yeah. if not then at least I could flog it for a bit I won't lose as much but, um, but I end up I, I get quite I say addicted to things when I'm in it so now I can I'm learning all the constellations and I if I'm doing a, a 5k the next day I want to do a 10k do you know what I mean like yeah that? yeah yeah and a couple of weeks ago I did a Rubik's Cube for the first time I think I saw a post and you were very proud I've not done that well now I've got to the stage where I want to get as quick as I can so I've, I've actually sad I've actually got a Rubik's Cube in my pocket because yeah. I'm trying to get help <laughs> when I've got a spare moment have you seen the guys on obviously you must see on the YouTube the five seconds yeah I'd know. love to I'd love to know how it's a code though like again it's an, it's, um, algorithm yes yeah. it's interesting because again Tom Wood I mean, I, I might as well, you should have been interviewed by Tom Wood on this podcast. <laughs> he, um, he got into Rubik's Cubes as well. Okay. Same thing. Had it in England camp. We're sitting around. Lads are watching, talking crap, drinking coffee. He's like... And he got ridiculously quick again. And, and you, you, you know, you'd mix it up for him, give it to him. And he'd be like, look at it, turn it, that, 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 that. But I, I tried it. Mm. I mean, A, my, these hands are not good for anything other than <laughs> apart from not good at catching, not good at Rubik's Cubes. Maybe they were good at punching, but we'll never know. Um, but yeah, it's very difficult. So, so you've kind of enjoyed sitting back here. and, and Yeah, learning. it's and, and again, it's like spending time with, with my wife and my dog. Like it's, I would be, uh, how often would it be? Like every other, probably every four weeks we were away somewhere, at least, somewhere at in least, the world. Yeah, somewhere. So it was nice to, it's just been nice to put the suitcase away and just enjoy being, being at home. As I say, it's the first time being out, so I've dressed up a bit smarter. Yeah, mate, you look, yeah. you look dapper. What about yourself? I'm I'm past the being at home now. Right, I really am. Um, <laughs> and I probably was a while ago, actually. Um, Does your wife know that? <laughs> yeah, she, she 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 she's the one who tells me, you know. Ah, uh, right. Uh, but like we've just been li- literally just thinking, right, where can we go? What can we do? Um, just to, just to get out. So do you need actually, a goal? Do you need a goal like that? Like do, something yeah. to hang your hat on. I do, yeah. Because so we've been. It's been. I mean, one way it's been really good because we've been able to get into a lot of um, different business ventures outside of anything what we've what I've done normally anyway. So we're involved in a confectionery brand with. Um, uh, Mike, actually, Mike, Mike Tindall, yeah, Mike, Wizards Chocolate. Wizard, Wizard, Wizards Chocolate out there now. Um, yeah, with Mike Tindall and Jason and Daniel and a few of the other guys through their King's Biltong venture. Um, so we've been able to put a bit more focus into into that type of thing. We've been able to, there's a few other ventures as well I'm involved with, something nothing to do with media or anything like that. So that's been nice in terms of giving me something to do. Um, but at the same, and then we ended up doing the podcast through literally, we were asked by... Uh, Johanna Conter if we would do an interview with her and I just said uh, <laughs> on the back of that yeah Joe do you want to come on our podcast and she says have you got a podcast I'm like, 
do now. Yeah. And then, <laughs> yeah. So we literally started that last year through literally on Zoom and it was really out there and gone. And that seemed to get a bit of traction. So again, that was nice. And it was what was good doing that is seeing the response from people all over the world. Like our demographic isn't who we would necessarily hang around with. Our demographic is pretty much... It's a bit hard. No, no. <laughs> what, I mean, what, what I mean is... is I would. No, yeah, yeah. No, 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 what I mean is it's like it's female, yeah. 1835. Yeah. Oh, um, I was about to say, if it was... I mean, I mean, eight, I females, 1835, I would have thought it was young young girls that you wouldn't want to hang around with, like, you know, when it, they're like 12 to 14. Yeah, no, no. I'll like hang that. around, yeah. for the record, if I've got any fans, like 18 to 30, and my wife's not around, I will, I will hang out. I won't. She would kill me, and I wouldn't do that. What I mean is, I wouldn't say they're our peers in terms no, of... No, fine. I know, yeah, I know what you mean. And, um, Don't let the truth get away of a good story. It doesn't mean we're going to give you shit here. We're going to cut... This going to be great. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be great. We say we're going to edit it. We're fucking not. <laughs> yeah. and, we, um, and we started to get some really nice messages from people saying, this is my one escape a week. And that's, yeah. that's really nice to do. And things started to, go on, started to take on a form of their own. Like, I go on and rant. I can do that quite easily. I've turned out by a lot of things. And people look forward to doing that and, Fine. and hearing it. So it's, it's random doing that type of thing. But on the whole... I'm done with being home more okay. now. Like I've been, I've really got into it, like playing playing golf. Just, would I do that anyway? But How do you play golf in lockdown, Oliver? Uh, you know, I've got I've got ways. It's uh, my setup. Go wait, on, go wait, on, have it. you got an extensive golf simulator? I do actually. There you oh! go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't said a word. I haven't <laughs> said a word yet today, but I do. Um, right, because Mike Tyndall's got a golf simulator as well. Oh right, okay. Yeah. I don't know if you've got the yeah. same setup. I'll well, ask him. Right, who's is better? Hey? I don't know. He's, it, I don't know. He's probably got more room. And who's better at golf? See. Yeah. Well, it's Tins plays on it's the folks, together, it's, it? it's, anyway. it's, it's intense, hey? Yeah, it this is, is it, it, it out. Is. But, and also, I, I, I strike you as a man that if, if you did find out he was he was better, you'd be like, you have to go off to a separate room, give yourself a Chinese burn, come down and calm, but you're like, <laughs> and then, it's fine, it's fine. I, listen, I, and, I, and, I, and then quickly get on the phone and upgrade. Yeah. It's been done, it's been done. So, 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 so just, just doing stuff like that, but after a while, I'm, I'm used to, we're used to going away throughout the year and meeting hundreds if not sometimes thousands of people a year and doing that is is brilliant for mm. me i love doing that and just having that interaction with people or just going to a city or, or or somewhere we've never been before and just exploring it so i'll go out and intentionally get lost yeah i don't mean like in the shady areas but like in the <laughs> yeah. area well that's the story you're going with yeah, yeah. I, oh I my say, god yeah. i got so yeah. lost oh, no, here, again. Here. Doing here again <laughs> so you've been here five times yeah. oh shh, shh, yeah. i haven't regular table yeah. sir it's, it's, it's my brother it's my brother <laughs> yeah oh. i can use that excuse you see and the problem is you can't grow a moustache and, and that's why he's probably done that's it so i'm probably sick of being labeled i'll be wearing a mask now for i'd love that i'd love you had a nose a glass attached and a, and a, and a moustache. <laughs> Is that you? Uh, um, um, I just want to touch on this because what I, what, what I want to talk to you both today was about, um, you know, growing up in, in the public eye, you know, p being part of, of, you know, one of the biggest things of our, our kind of our generation. But actually, I mean, I'm intrigued. You said that you were out of the house. What, what, what are you guys, what do you do then? What is the t stuff you're doing then to go? What, travelling to like Comic-Con and all this kind of stuff or, or, or events? Like, talk yeah, to me. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's things like that and it's speaking kind of engagements. It's a bit of everything. Yeah, there's like the Comic-Cons, which are, are great because we get to meet people. And I say they're all, they're places, especially in America, where we probably wouldn't ever go. But we have great, like, they turn out to be the best towns to go to, don't they? I guess it's like when you're playing rugby. If you go to a, a town which you never would go to, but then you have a night out yeah. there after, they're, they're the memorable Yeah, like, ones. I remember we went to Cast once for a tiny little place. We ended up finding this unbelievable club in the middle of nowhere that just sort of went off. You know, that, you know Europeans just start partying at, like, three in the morning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah stuff like that. I, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, so those... Um, and then if we're acting or anything like that, that normally comes on, and then... Going there, again, everything kind of goes back to Potter. There's still something always happening with Potter, whether it be the, the exhibition which was touring of all the props and the costumes and all that kind of stuff, or there's a new theme park opening or the studio tour, any, you know, things like that. It's always ticking over, which, and we're not reluctant to talk about it because we're, it's like with you, we'd love to, like, we love chatting, we love rugby, so we'd love to have that engagement yeah. about rugby with you. So if there's a Potter fan wanting to talk Potter with us, you kind of want to be treated as, you would want to be treated, yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah, which is important because a lot of people don't. A lot of people forget that. You know, I think it's, it's people who are humble, who remember where they come from, who understand that every time, and this is what I equate it to, you're basically a walking business card for yourself and you only get one chance to hand that out. And if it looks shit and gash and no one's interested, it's the same thing as a person. That For that one person, you're, it's their first meeting. Even if you're sick of it, they, they always forget that. Um, so let's go right back to the beginning. How, how did this happen? Do you want to be a, uh, an actor? No, not really. I mean, I suppose it was never on the cards. 
where we where we grew up, where we went to school, anything like that. It was never on the cards. Oh, we can go and do this. And we were fourteen, so we just we were in our final few, maybe final few weeks of year nine. Uh, so it's when you start choosing your your GCSEs, and you kind of get recommended what you should and shouldn't do type thing. And I remember the drama teacher said, "I wouldn't bother with with drama." And I, <laughs> you don't I, have a career in you it. You don't have a career in it. So I was kind of like, well, kind of, mate. I mean, you are a bit of a failed PE teacher. <laughs> All right, fine. So we, so we left it there. Good thing you've we... got over it again. <laughs> are you, can I just say, are you, you, you are, the, are you the more aggressive of the, yes. of the brothers? Yeah, I yeah, sense definitely. that. You, are you yeah. like more reserved? Do you have to like go, there's a lot of apologising for him because he's lost the plot again? Or, or like, because you, cause you, obviously, I, I don't know you boys that well, but I think you, you, you're a bit more quiet and considered and you're much more like pedal to metal. I think, I think that's probably a fair assessment. I'm kind of less... Um, what's the word? Less, le- oh, I think Jay-Z is less confrontational. Fine. Maybe. Okay. I'm more cool. like, you know, the Godfather, I'm the, I'm Al Pacino, I'll sit back and watch everything happen. Right. And he's more like, uh, what's the brother called? Sonny. Sonny. Yeah, like he's, me, just yeah. come blasting in, fuck everyone off, blow everything up, yeah. you know, and then, and then, <laughs> and then I, think, I, think I wish I'd been more considered. I think, yeah, sometimes, but at other times, I think it's, that's, that's the way to be. Fine. I'd, ra- I'd rather someone, be with me and say, look, you're messing up here. Fine. You're doing right. I'd rather be Just like remember that. what happened to Sonny. That's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but I, wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily do anything <laughs> worse than that. Yeah, you know? yeah, but, but, but yeah. So basically, are you saying that you two are like the actual gangsters? Because <laughs> this is the world exclusive. Is this how you're travelling? Because you're off hitting and extorting <laughs> people. <laughs> Twice dressed like that. I was yeah, about yeah. to say, <laughs> making people disappear in concrete uh, yeah. uh, overcoats. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so we went to this, we went to an, an open audition. We heard uh, through my mum, uh, a friend of my mum got in touch saying that there's there's an open audition there, audition for all parts of the fi- uh, for the film. Do you want to go uh, for Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stones? So, uh, when is it? And they said, oh, it's like next Thursday. So we're like, okay, one, it's a day off school. Two, we could be in a film. Yes, let's do it. So that was it. So we had a day trip up to Leeds, um, and then yeah, went to, got got to this this hotel, and they were as I say, they were just for every part. So there was literally thousands of people there, and it's the first time we ever saw the stage mom. And it's just you you see the worst of the worst in some people sometimes. Yeah. It's just like, what are you doing? And we're just like, okay, we'll do our thing. And we got a raffle ticket and they were on number say seven, we had four hundred and something. So we had a lot of time. And then we re- they gave you a little bit of paper, didn't they? And it was the same line for everybody. It was one of Harry's lines. And they said, uh, okay, just learn this and then when we'll call you a number, it's time to do it. And we were looking around. And we noticed that of all the other sets of twins there, and there was there was quite a few, we realised that we were the only ones who weren't in the same clothes. When you're going for identical twins for a role, may not be someone's wearing blue, someone's wearing red. Isn't maybe the you best idea? You know, and you idea. think back and you think, what naive what we've we'll dropped, the, we'll drop yeah. the ball before we've even started. Exactly. exactly. Well, I think that just shows how naive we were to the whole. Yeah, thing. So, just really green. But I love so. that. Yeah. yeah so so we, then we we ended up. I'm going to take over just so I can. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get a drink. Take, yeah. But yeah. Um, so By the way, we, just say oh, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. If you see us flapping, there's these tiny little flies in the studio that are, are flying around. It's not like we're possessed or we've been on the mushrooms or something like that. So just to clear that up, it's carry on. Yeah. So we ended up so because we knew we had like two or three hours to wait we ended up just running over to the the bhs over the road and just grabbed two shirts off the rack and then we wore them for the first audition and when we our number was eventually called we ended up there's two lines up door on the left door on the right door on the right opened and no one was in that line for it and they said do you want to come in and we we thought well we said no we've waited in this line we'll just stay in here so the people went in that room we ended up going in the door that we'd been waiting to and that's where the head casting director was and she liked what she saw. She um, she was like, oh, I read the lines. And then she said, can you, have you got your, um, you know, your photograph and resume? Got your, uh, and you've got your, your photo book. You got your headshots. Your and headshots. we were like, mm, <laughs> no. So she ended up getting a Polaroid camera. So obviously there's no smartphones or anything like this in 2000. And so yeah, that, that was our first audition. And then we got a phone call a couple of days later saying they'd like us to come and meet the director and the producer or do another audition at the studio. That happened three or four times. Mm-hmm. And then the final audition is a screen test, which when you're on a set, and they've got the crew around you and you've got to do the scene as if you were doing the movie. And I've never been more scared in all my life as that particular audition because it was, it was touching. Like, that was... I'm there. I'm more... Like, you can Finger see the goal. Exactly. Know, hands on the trophy, but could easily be whisked away from you. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's weird because I never thought that. It was bizarre. I think in na- naivety at 14, you think... You get past the first audition, um, oh, we've got it. We just, it's just a formality. Yeah. Just going to it. And it was so. I don't know if that 
in one way helped or, or not. But, but, but you were shitting your. I mean, you I love that. Well, I know. I know. Obviously, it, it, it's, it's you know it's so stupid. The twins are all so fundamentally different. We all have this you know, concept, and, and people can be so different. That's why it's interesting. We you know people talk about nature and nurture. You can have two people, same parents, same environment, example, and grow up completely different personalities. It's interesting to say your approach. You know, you're shitting it. You were just like, oh, sweet. Yeah. We're, we're in. We're in here. Yeah. As, um, as I say, I think that I think that was probably more naivety than anything now but then I mean going back to what we were talking about earlier like there was there was another set of twins in one of the auditions and they were the most arrogant asses I think I've ever seen really they were like oh yeah we've got the parts we're just like, telling everyone in the room but that's that's mind games you know, no it is and I, I remember sat there thinking to myself I don't want it just for me now I want it so you don't I love that because uh, I, I was when I was younger in rugby trials and stuff that kind of mind game stuff broke me I, rem I remember now uh, my mental toughness and mental strength was just not very great. I, I'd listen, you'd listen to it, and they go, oh, "Have you heard about so and so?" Like, I remember this kid I talked about in the book. They went, "So and so can um, put a piece of A4 paper on the anywhere on the pitch, kick a ball, and land it on it." Mm. I don't think Johnny Wilkinson could have done that. Yeah. And you just think that, you go, "Oh, so and so can do this. So and so can run through this." And, and it's your kid. You're like, it makes you think that you start second guessing yourself. It's like when if people can't equate it to anything else. It's like when you go to do school exams and someone comes in and goes, "I've been revising the whole time," yeah. and the other guy comes in and goes, "I've done nothing." And you don't know which one's done which. Turns out the kid has done, who did nothing, has been beavering away, and the person who's done everything is bullshitting. But we 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 always buy into that confidence yeah. stuff. Yeah, we I, do. I, yeah. That, I mean, it still goes on to this day with other auditions. Ours in we did it. We, we, in, we did it one, didn't we? Yeah, we, we did. Were, uh, we did it. I said that wasn't the story I was going to tell. <laughs> okay. <that's laughs> well, you tell that story. You tell that story. <laughs> yeah. uh, the story I was going to tell was when I was in LA and I was in an audition for a TV show, and I was getting, I think it's like the second or third second audition. And so you had a callback, which a lot of people are just happy with the callback, but I wanted obviously the gig. And then it was down to like four more pit four people. And there was four of us in the room. And in the UK, kind of the etiquette is everyone's nice and pleasant to each other in in the audition room. Like there's no, you just want to do the job. Yeah. That's how I viewed it. I just wanted to get the job. And there's a guy there kind of being a bit, he's kind of like looking, just like looking you up and down. Went over to where you sign in, you'd go over, read your name. And then you'll be on IMDB looking at what you've done. And he's literally there going, <laughs> and he went in. And when he came out, he like looked at me and goes, "Oh mate, you bet, you best just off because you know I've got this." And walked off. I was like, so when I walked in, I walked into the audition room. I was like, "Hello, like nice to meet you, nice to meet you." He said, "Guy, what, was he as angry with you as he was just out there?" And she, she was like, "Well, what, what do you mean?" I said. He was saying horrible things about you. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's not my business. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, I didn't get the job. I know he didn't either. No, so excellent. Right. right. So if you're not going to get it, take everyone down. Exactly. Around. Yeah. I do. I do find that that that, that psychological element so interesting. Um, where people worry about everyone else but not themselves. I thought you you see it quite nicely with um, the other Phelps in the world, uh, Michael Phelps, um, who um, that Australian uh, South African swimmer. He spent yeah. the whole time eyeballing him. Yeah. And he and he just get into his head, in his vis field of vision, looking up and down. And he just got battered because his mind was on everything else but what he should be, should yeah. be doing. So, yeah. Well, surely you should back yourself more well, than exactly, yeah. Yeah. trying to outdo the other yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even in boxing, it doesn't, surely it doesn't work as, as much as they make. No, out, like I mean, but what, what they also always forget with these things is, is there's no point hating the other actors because you don't make the decision. Because if you made the decision, you'd give yourself the part exactly, already. Yeah. And it's, it's the same lesson in life. Like we had it with rugby players. We have people called position haters. They're so competitive, they get, they get all arsed. And I've sat down with like back row players in England and everyone else. I said, listen, lads, I know we're in competition, but we're ultimately on the same team together. I said, we don't pick the team. So I said, if you want to, we go hard in competition. But I said, if, you, if you're off it, giving people side eyes, talking about people in corners, so you're ultimately fucking yourself because the only people who make the decision are the, are the coaches. And then you see it kind of dawn on them. Mm. And then they're like, well, why are you being nice all the time? I said, because you're not, you, you're my competition, but you're not, you don't, you're not the deciding factor. No. What was your no. story about? Mine was, um, mine was, we had a, an audition. It was, it was the final callback actually. And um, we were waiting to, we were waiting outside to go in and we'd already been messed about with the casting director anyway, to get hand. They changed it at like the last minute to, you know, three hours later or something. It's like, okay. So we we're waiting around and we were outside and um, there was another set of twins outside. And this this guy was just like so flippant. Went, oh, so are you an actor or, or what? <laughs> He's kind of dressed like I am now. Actually. Yeah. Kind of like, yeah. Uh, I won't a cigarette. Yeah. yeah. I won't. Yeah. I probably. Right should, I won't. I won't. I won't repeat the exact word I called him, but I said, no, I'm a builder. You. Oh yeah. And then we were called in, and he it was not the response he was waiting for. He was. He, he kind of just stood there like. Uh, uh, like that, and I walked in from saying that. I walked in. It's like happy days. Yeah. I've already got one thing out, and we did it, and we. 
luckily we got the part because I would have felt really bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, but it, I just think that like if you're going to put that out on someone, expect it to come back at you. Yeah. Of Twice course. as hard. Yeah. That's that's why I do it. With just with you know you said about the the, the drama teacher said to you you know you weren't going to make it or whatever. So you were just doing you were doing drama. So you had a bit of an interest in it or, or were you, I mean do because you, you look back at how you used to act then. And look oh, back yeah. at it and just think, yeah. how I, I would go completely yeah. different now. But yeah. then that's because I, I didn't go to drama school or anything like that. Fine. So it was kind of, I learned on the job. So I was, I think like quite a few of us, we were observing, especially the, the adult actors, because they were the cream of the crop of UK acting. And so it was, and they were very good at picking their brains if you ever wanted to ask about stuff and mm. method and getting into it. So it's only subsequently since then, I've actually gone to drama <laughs> drama school not, oh really not, but you know like studied it and yeah. all that kind of stuff and um had some great experiences doing that just to go around preparation because usually it would like at first first day on potter it was literally just turn up and do it yeah whereas now i've got a method if i'm if i'm going into work in if i'm act, whether it be a film or stage or whatever i always do exercise in the morning so then i always keep on that healthy body healthy mind kind of thing and then okay. you're fully focused and i go teetotal whenever i'm acting now because oh, really and then i have a big blowout at the yeah. very end of it but it's still I, that's just now what i've got into oh no i think i think that's because you it was probably a bit late because we were only you know we we're still kids when we got the, the the part in the film or initially and it was probably only maybe the third film that you realize actually this is a job yeah it's not it's not guff, it's, it's not just messing around or anything like that you're actually someone's paying you to do something and that's always the way i suppose you just be your best with it you put yourself take I wouldn't say take take yourself seriously, but take what you're doing seriously yeah. uh, with that, and kind of try and adapt that to nearly everything. I'd like to say, definitely, yeah. I think, but I, I've also become a lot more aware of. So I did a stage show a couple of years ago, and it was the best one, the best gig I've ever done, because not just me personally, but the whole experience, everything about it, I was at peace with. with does that make yeah, sense? Like yeah, yeah. everything was fine, everything was good, and I was speaking to a couple of the other cast members and we were saying like why is like everyone else had the same vibe and it was sold out like everything was good about it and we couldn't put our finger on why and then someone just read out this quote which was it's amazing what you can achieve if you don't get who gets the cre if you don't care who gets the credit yeah mm. which was exactly what it was and I think that's now what I take into any anything I do is that I I want it to be successful, regardless if people know that I'm in it or not. You know? Did you not? Did you not see that from the the actors in, in the Potter film, the, the, the more senior ones? Because you know, the, some of the people you had in there, I can't imagine it was a case of them trying to up upstage anyone. You know, because it, it, that's the vibe. You know, I know some actors go into a job and they want to win Oscars, they want to do stuff. But on those Potter films, you had such an eclectic mix of like some of the most unbelievable actors. Did that not come across in that, that they were all just yeah. trying to do their own thing? Yeah, I know it did, yeah. but I, th I think it's more because I didn't have the responsibility okay. as I do mm. in other jobs uh, I do now. Do, do you know what I mean? Oh, yes, because so you weren't the main people. Exactly. or Yeah, and you were just, you know, okay. Well, can you talk me through like, the moment? So you said you got the callbacks and everything else like that. What was the moment like when the, then this messing around, these, these sort of callbacks turned into like, you've got it? As, as I say, for me, it was like, okay, cool. It was, it, was from, it was already in my head. I don't know if it's because the Truman Show just came out and I thought, oh, we're being watched somewhere. It was, it, was, it, was, it was a weird stuff what goes into your head when you're going through it. And I was kind of just like, uh, cool. Okay, I kind of thought that already. Um, yeah, I can't say it, was, it wasn't surprising that it, we got it. Was, it, it, okay. it, 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 wasn't, it wasn't like winning was, the lottery and like, you know, you'd entered once and then that was it. Oh, it okay. Was, it was a case of where you, you'd, you'd built up to it and you knew you were getting close to the prize. So when we heard that we got it and we came away from the auditions thinking, We've done well there. Okay. We've done well there. Um, did you get any feedback? Did people feedback? Because everyone goes, darling, you did brilliant. brilliant. Yeah, that's or always it. Like... Don't call us, we'll call you. That's, yeah. that, that, that's, that's literally all you ever get is, oh, thanks for coming. Apart from there was an assistant once who said, uh, she was American, said, oh, great, thanks, have a nice life. So, oh. Have a nice life. But they <laughs> right. think, what they forget is that one interaction, yeah. that they might have just been a flippant thing that she always says to people. You, you, that... Yeah, You've, yeah, yeah. You, so, you could have stuffed you lads forever. You're like, would you? Exactly, would you mean yeah. have a nice life? That could, be your, that could be your trademark when you yeah. when you're yeah. uh, when you're that, yeah. uh, gigging. But I always talk about people who say, um, you know, you know, like parenthood, parents who try, you know, remember that every interaction you have with a kid could define how that kid turns out. But you can't live your life by that. But you can also be more considerate. It's like what we talked about the interaction you have with fans. That could be their one moment. You're having a bad day and you give them nothing. That could define how they view you mm. and that they could turn them off. Everything Harry Potter wise, if you guys had a, a bad day, it's, it's, yeah. it's mad that you had it. Um, so when you got into it and, and obviously did the films, did the eight films, and how many years did it span that you were working at? All in all, from, from first 
actual like first scene being done to final premiere was eleven years. Eleven years. Did did you enjoy it? Was it was it enjoyable? Yeah. Well, I think at first. On the first film, I did feel, I suppose, a bit homesick because we were living in a hotel and the hotel we stayed in on the first film was this horrible... It, remember, it was well, no, you can say, yeah, but you can say that now because we've been spoiled no, from no, it was, other it hotels. Was, it, was, it was off the ring road in Watford. <laughs> was, Anything off the ring road in Watford. <laughs> it was just, I'm not going to... I don't want to talk bad about Watford. It, I don't it imagine wasn't, this It wasn't lunch. the best. It wasn't no. the best place. And after a while, I was kind of just a bit like, I'm, I'm kind of bored of just living in a hotel. And also, we would get picked up at seven in the morning and we wouldn't get back to the hotel till like eight. So in the winter, when we were filming quite a chunk of the film, you wouldn't see any sunlight throughout the whole time. So after a while, you, that, in hindsight, that starts to get into your head. Yeah. Um, but then after that, it's, you kind of take it, and then obviously we go back to school and you get, you get ribbing from people. People would just be jealous and say, you know, whatever. Like what, like what? Or just like, you just have random people just going, oh, Harry Potter this, and all <laughs> that, or Ginger. And kind of like, oh, do you know what I mean? Like, you, yeah, get, yeah. So you got all this Sound like this me. Sure, I wasn't yeah. at school with yeah. you. <laughs> so you kind of, so you kind of, you got that going on as well when you get home, and then you kind of just think, not that I, would, I wouldn't stop yeah, doing that. I can't say that ever bothered, that, that, that it, never bothered yeah, me. Yeah, but that's why you're two different people. That's why, yeah. I, I, that's why I love it. You're both, you know, to ex you're both experiencing the same thing and have completely different experiences of it. It's, fa it's fascinating. I mean, what, 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 did you find it fun? Was it eye-opening for you? Yeah, I, I, I was very, and I, to this day, I was very lucky. I, I was appreciative of how lucky I was. Oh, yeah. No, no, I'm and, I, I and no matter how, how much rubbish can come that way, yeah. you know, I'm... <laughs> I felt mm. bulletproof when anyone was if anyone was saying stuff at me I was like okay go back to your paper round and yeah. <laughs> well, if you want to slag me off about being ginger fine yeah, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm more than happy about it it, yeah. was, it was yeah it was that type of thing but I think the more we got into it and then we see because obviously I think our age group may have been just a little bit too old for the initial book launch okay. um, it seemed to be like a couple of years below at that time and we were so we saw what it was the gener you know how big it was getting we knew that the first time they showed it anywhere like the the trailer uh, or like the sizzle um snippet of it the teaser to it was at the super bowl um so warner Bros. invested like you know a lot of money to show it off or whatever and then we, so we we knew that it was big we saw it firsthand it's like a what 100 million pound budget on the first film so we knew that it was this big thing and i don't think other people knew that but then when we got more into it and then you see more of a response from people um, but again when we're filming you're in your own bubble aren't you like you don't really interact with a lot of other things what are going on and then it's i mean it blows it still makes me laugh now how when we think that on the fifth film they said right do you guys want to do some promoting for the films on the different markets so around europe basically where they don't normally send talent they i said, think that, well the main the main talent as in Dan Rupemo and then a couple of the adult guys would do definitely London yeah. and New York or LA, one of the American markets. Yeah. But there was such a big demand in Europe to have Potter there as well. So one of the guys, uh, Jason, that used to be at Warner's, he was, he said like, well, let's see if any of the, the other actors want to go out and promo. So, so imagine you're, you're 21 a guy comes to you and says, do you want to go on the company card around Europe for a couple of weeks? <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I do, please. <laughs> well, I can remember on one of the, on one, well, one of the, to sum it up, one of the trips, they're like, right, okay, we've got to go to, we're going to Paris today. I'm like, okay, where are we staying? The Ritz. Okay. How long are we there for? Four days. Okay. What are we doing? We've got three days of press. And that's not like all day. That's yeah. just like the other four hours here and event and stuff. Okay, okay. And they, I said, is there anything you want to do? So we said, oh, we'd love to go to the Louvre. And they said, oh, it's closed on your one-off days. So like, ah, all right, whatever, what else, what else can we do? So we had this other stuff lined up. And then we got picked up and then went to um, outside, like, the, you know, the pyramid outside. Yeah, yeah. And they said, uh, we, we've opened it today for you guys. And we had the whole Louvre. There's James, myself, Tom Felton, and our two pals. The whole Louvre to ourselves. Oh so it was like, got, you know, on the Da Vinci Code when he's running down. Yeah. The, it was like that. It was literally like that. We went to, like, obviously, you got, like, the Mona Lisa and... We went under the barrier right in front of it. Oh, and the guy wow. showed us. He said, oh, yeah, there's actually a light. If you put your hand over it, it's actually a, got a jet on it. What makes it look lighter or darker than it actually is because it's faded. And they showed us oh, all that. really? On the, as, as great as filming was and doing stuff like that, those... Suppose, extras, those the benefits. Extras were apps. And like, we've done some really cool stuff. Yeah, but I... Yeah, but, related. But we had a great... I remember when we were in... Um, I think it was Helsinki. And my, my best mate is... Uh, a guy called Anthony, who was Rupert's double on the film. Was that when you thought when he thought he was going to get fired? No, that's a different time. But, <laughs> but well, that's the same trip. But and when he got out the car, everyone thought that it was Rupert, 
Right. But Anthony just kept walking straight down. Everyone started booing. booing him <laughs> <'cause he> was, <laughs> well, I think it was his nightmare to have like a load of um, 18 year old Finnish girls booing him. I think he's, yeah. <laughs> he's, never, been, his, he's never quite got over it. He's never got quite over it, no. Yeah. With the rest of the cast and stuff on, on those days, do you do you ever share stories? Do you feel like you missed you missed out on a childhood? From that now you're now obviously you're out of it. And and again, your podcast we're going to come on to later. Normal, not normal, is what is a normal childhood. But there's some pretty clear, distinct milestones that you, you boys may have may not had. Yeah, I don't think so because as far as I was concerned, we'd go, we did our job. It was just going to do our job. That's all we did. We did. Uh, we we kept in schooling. Throughout like teenage years, I had a season ticket at Villa, at Aston Villa. So I went to there every other Saturday or whenever the games were on. Um, would go out on a Friday, Saturday night to most mostly rock clubs. They were like cheap and cheerful anyway. So it's not like we were glamouring Earth or anything like that. And majority of my pals even now are friends from school. Fine. So I don't think I don't I wouldn't say we've we've missed anything, and I certainly wouldn't change anything that we we did. Um, certainly wouldn't in those years anyway. What about yourself? Yeah, exactly the same, to be honest, apart from the Villa season ticket. Um, <laughs> yeah, that would have been some sort of punishment. <laughs> yeah, isn't yeah, it? No, They're definitely. actually doing quite well at the moment. <clears> They're doing all right now. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've heard that. Okay. Did, did you interact with, do you have a lot, because obviously on the filming things, like people think when you go on for a filming set that it's kind of all, it's all glamour. A lot of sitting around, a lot of reshooting, everything's shot at six or seven different angles. You find yourself repeating, you know, things all the time. You know, was that, was that hard? Was that tiring, especially as you weren't, professional actors uh to start with it was i remember on the second movie there was a scene when uh lockhart and is it lockhart and snape are having a duel yeah they're having the, the, yeah. in the great Hall. i know that yeah, yeah yeah that took two weeks to shoot that That's entire crazy, scene yeah. because all the kids the different angles the, the, yeah. you know, oh, and really? because we were kids and the whole obviously the whole cast and the um all the background artists um they're all kids as well so 300 people need education. So there was only like four hours of shooting a day you could do. So nowadays you could do that in, if everyone was over 18 or six, 16, 18, you could do that in a day, two days. But because of the different camera angles and the stunts, it took two weeks. So if you look at one, I know at one bit, people are literally like mouthing the dialogue that's going on because they- Really? Yeah. That's where old uh, Malfoy produces the snake at the end of his wand, really doesn't he? Out, yeah. God, I yeah. But I, I remember as well, like, they, they, they had to reshoot part of it. Well, they had to take another take, should I say, because they had um, they obviously had like um, doubles doing cer certain parts if they're off camera. And I, I can remember um, whoever was doing Malfoy, I think it was Malfoy's doubles and like that did it. And he, he starts trying to speak parcel tongue. And we're, we're all like, what is he doing? <laughs> and then everyone just starts, like, we all start laughing. Like, we're, we're, we're at the back. Why was he doing that? I've no idea. Like, I've seen in the thing he speaks, like, Harry, sorry, Harry speaks to the snake. Yeah. But this, like, this person goes, Oh, no. Were there any real hard bits about it? Anything that you just, um, that you thought was just not, not for me? Or, or? I, think it's, I think probably more what came a bit later, especially with the environment, oh, I sound like really old now, the environment of the internet, um, with social media. I think that probably became when things got quite intrusive. Like, I remember when we first started, some girl in America had got our parents' home number. We were like 14 and we got a phone call from this person in Illinois who wanted to have a chat, which was quite mind blowing at the time. But they were like, can you not, bank, like those things, can you not call us again? Yeah. Okay, bye. And then obviously you go X directory. Um, but yes, yeah, so subsequently since then, like, I think since social media comes into it, there's some people who so say, like, we'll show them how much we want people to see. But then some people want to see, way more than yeah. that than what they than what you're prepared to, to give them so you'll get people who will you know pretend will make fake profile accounts of not just you but your family your friends try and friend other people who you know and do you know what i mean to try and get into people like that and try and obtain be it photographs information something random like that so stuff like that does get quite intrusive and you kind of, you try i try and shut myself away from it um because it happens what can you do with it with it happening but stuff like that is probably in terms of one negative what comes from it um that may be that may be and i suppose playing characters who we did in fred and george people kind of relate to those characters a lot more as oh they'll be all right with it yeah and they're quite funny when you're like and that's really really <laughs> crossing the line yeah but then on the other side of it you like get, those wigs in the first movie 
the ginger wigs or what they were they wigs or they cut no, they would die. Yeah. 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 Well the haircuts they gave you, whatever or maybe oh, that yeah. was your natural haircuts. <laughs> Jesus, I put my foot in here. <laughs> whatever the hell you two to... thought leaving the house with them two lids. We ginger. decided that one, yeah, we decided yeah. that, yeah. Have you looked back and reflected going, Wow, I can see why I got the heat shocking. I, I can't watch the first the first at least the first two movies properly. At least when my if if I'm if they're ever on and my bits coming up. Why? Because we just I, it's, it's like a home video. It's like a home video from when you're fourteen and you've you've your voice is still high as a kite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your, your haircut's dodgy as hell. Yeah. Like, no, uh, nothing about it is is glamorous for me, apart from knowing, remembering what we did when we were filming when it. When we were filming it, yeah. So the behind this, what we're doing behind the scenes yeah. was fun, but actually seeing myself... Because obviously, like any movie with child actors, the actors pro- pro- you know, progressing from where it was from movie one to yeah. what it's like in movie eight, yep. you know, is... Yeah, it's just completely different. Yeah, exactly. You know? I think there's. He's talking about the haircuts. I mean, the first two were shockers. The third wasn't much better. The fourth I didn't mind with the long hair. The fifth one was terrible, and then the sixth <laughs> and latest films they were kind of just like shorter. Yeah, so I feel like I easier. brought up like a you know like a, I'm, I'm <laughs> talking about the haircut <laughs> thing. It turns out it's like your war one Achilles heel. <laughs> I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be cuddling myself. On the yeah, way home, just like, Damn, I love how you doing? know which ones as well. First is shit. <laughs> yeah. Third okay. Fourth gash. Fifth. Um, is there kind of because um, I want to come onto the, the fans thing in a minute. Is there any hangover from the fame stuff? You have ever had to take any therapy out of it? Like, I've always been uh, vocal about my kind of, um, you know, about 18, real confidence issues, real issues around my ability, kind of holding me back. And throughout my whole career, I've always spoken to sports psychologists, psychologists, we talked about the mindful stuff. Is there anything that's happened out of that period where you've gone, actually, this has made me, like, I've developed anxiety, I've developed anything else like that because of it? I would say, for me, the whole experience... So experience as from it started, it's uh, worked better for me because when we first started, I was the happily the shy kid. I was the one who would be at the back of the crowd. Not, I mean, I'm not. I'm not as loud as you can probably tell. Uh, anyway, but yeah. back then I was more. Probably people may even thought that I was arrogant because I wasn't engaging so much. But that's, that's just how I was. Pretty shy. Yeah. But playing a character that was very outgoing, that kind of made me push myself to do that, and then I actually enjoyed doing that. So. If we're ever doing a, like we've done speeches to you know, literally 10,000 people and I'm not nervous one bit because I enjoy the attention of it. But before then, that would have absolutely scared the living hell out of me. And since Potter and the fame and everything, I, I wouldn't say there's been a hangover from it for me because it's, I enjoy, we're very lucky in regards that we've had very minimal negative stuff to us. The only, th- if anything's come from it, which is, can be seen as a knock and I think quite a lot of actors have it is that if you do an audition there's a good chance that you're not going to get the role and if you do multiple auditions if you ever do pilot season in America you've got like 10 auditions in 10 days if you don't get any of those gigs that's pretty that's something to get over that rejection but I've I've learned to oh well yeah move 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 on on. yeah yeah Yeah. so it's I I think it's I'm very I I know it's a, a common thing anyway but I'm very aware of that you learn more from failing than you do from succeeding and i'm very aware of that and i take that on board not, not that i try and fail to learn but yeah, i know what you mean you yeah. know what i mean like i i kind of embrace it now and i um i'm very i now have the mentality of i can achieve something and i'm i, I don't think i can how can i put this I don't get excited if I do achieve something because I already in my mind. You're living in the moment. I think it, yeah. it, it talks about you know like it, in in my sports life. You know, uh, I live in the present, so you never get overexcited, but you never get too disappointed because you're only worried about what you can control. And you sort of learn to be present in that without putting words in your mouth. That's kind of what it yeah. sounds like to me. Exactly. I yeah. think the, the only the only time when I've genuinely been happy with what I've done was I did a charity bike ride in the Alps two years ago. And I literally went there. Did thinking, you do a charity bike riding? You never told me that. I like it. Oh. <laughs> oh, you're trying to get your revenge on the golf. I've got a sauna in my house. I've got a golf simulator. Yeah, I did this charity bike ride in the Alps. Good to see the competition between you two. Which was what? Which was what? A Tour de France stage. Yeah, a couple of them. Ah, um, sorry about that. It wasn't just, it wasn't just going you're making me feel inferior, lads. I haven't got a sauna, a golf simulator, and I can't. I can't. Ride, I can ride a bike, but not up a but, bloody mountain. Well, fl- flying that, I literally thought there is no way in hell I'm going to do. I can achieve this, but I'm going to give it a try. And it was more out of. Um, uh, thing for the base, the guy we talk about who got us to do the touring and everything, and he actually inadvertently introduced me to my now wife. So I kind of felt like I owed him. Fine, one. okay. And when I so anyway, I ended up doing it. I hated, I, I really hated it at times, but I did it, and that was the first time in a long time I'd realised I'd been very genuinely pleased with myself. And because, and then I related it to because you go in something thinking I've, I can do this. That's yeah. why 
it's achievable to get through it. What, what about you? Yeah, I kind of, I suppose I, over, over a couple of years, actually, probably from towards the end of filming, not probably like the sixth movie, maybe, started to, you, you start maybe just taking stuff a bit more seriously and over seriously, and then you over and analyze everything. And then after a while, that just got more and more. And I found myself, I would say, wearing a mask. If I was doing anything in public, it would be happy face. That's it. And that, for me, wasn't good after a long time. And that, that got worse and worse and worse and worse. And then in the end, um, one thing led to another. And I was just like, right, I need, I need help here. Uh, so I went to, um, at least you got, got him and like got on. I, I didn't even know what to search. Yeah. So you're like, it's quite intimidating you, one of those you, things. You, like, what is, what am I? Yeah, do, do you I need type, to speak to just you someone? In, yeah, do you type in loony bin? Like, what, what <laughs> yeah, do you type? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I just typed in like mental mental wellness, and then, ironically, the day I did it was Mental Health Day. I didn't know anything about it until I googled it, and it said, "Oh, look, here it is. It's that's today." So, okay. Anyway, nothing nothing related apart from that. Anyway, clicked on it, and then um, booked in to see a, uh, a counselor two days later, and it probably took about three sessions from going that I really started to see benefit from, from doing it. Although, yeah. like, it's kind of like you like a release valve. Yeah. And there's just years and years of just crap, like, where it just gets released. Yeah. And you kind yeah. of just like... And it's good because I was, she was just like... One of the other things what she said was I, was I wasn't finding joy in stuff. I'd almost just sit there like, yeah, it's all right. Like, yeah. I didn't want to experience that high. In case you experience the in low. In case you get the low, yeah. So I remember we were in Amsterdam um, and we went to... On one of these trips and we went to Ajax... And we were guests of the club. So Edwin van der Sar, who's the club president, presented us with signed shirts. We're sitting in the Royal Box. And I remember sitting there going, when are we doing this tomorrow? As, as opposed to fly. As opposed to, uh, you know what I mean? As opposed to how amazing yes. is this, you know, doing all that. So you were looking for the, the negatives always, overthinking yeah, everything. Yeah, pretty much. Oh. And then you feel guilty for that. And then you, it adds, and adds, yeah. and adds. And then, so after a while, yeah, so from going to that and then just accepting that, because I always thought as well that we're talking about words what may not be right or be right. I always used to hate the word content. So to me, me that would be satisfied. That's, yeah. not, a good, that's not a good thing. Um, and then gradually, so over the time I go now, probably every, every six weeks or so, and that's just good just to almost like, I suppose, recenter and also, okay, well, what? Because everything happens in life. Yeah. Different stuff happens. <clears throat> what gets you feeling a bit good, bad, yeah. or, or whatever, someone... And I suppose one thing as well that I did do, which I don't do now, is you try and hold people account... Try and hold people to the same standards as you set yourself. Yeah. Which is a non-starter yeah. from the off. Which is, again, why probably, like, I would... Like, with that guy at that audition I mentioned earlier, <clears throat> I would say to him... Sorry, I'm not... Quarrel. Got a frog in your throat. <laughs> or a fly. <laughs> <laughs> probably. <laughs> and this... Um, yeah, and that, that's why I'd say to him, like... Don't, don't talk to me like that. Yeah. Whereas before, I, I wouldn't have done that. I'd have just had this mask on, like, oh, okay, but inside would be, yeah. be raging. So that's, that's kind of where the difference is. But in doing so, I think it's really benefited me long-term, way long-term. And it's probably had a much better influence when we've been, when we meet people. If someone is a bit of a, a nause to us, I will probably say something to yeah. them, like, do you really need to do that? Like, I remember we went to a, a club, um... And we were, as we were leaving, there were these, remember these two girls going in? And mm. the one girl said, uh, oh, how are you doing? Love, love, love the films, da, da, da. And her mate went, I hate Harry Potter. And so I just said, Where is it? oh, yeah, no, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, you're the person, oh, yeah. Instead of just enjoying your mate, having a really good time, you have to, sh on everything, yeah, don't you? Yeah. And, um, and this girl, no, I didn't mean it like that. I said, why say it then? Yeah, so I get that all the yeah, time. Like, you know, oh, mate, listen, Haskell, I thought you were a prick, but you, you do all right now. I was like, yeah. why, why do you have to why say that? Why do you have to say that? Yeah, exactly, that's not yeah. my benefit. Yeah, you know, so like, it's for you. What you, so you yeah. turn that on them and say, I used to think you were right. Yeah, I yeah. No, I, 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 in the book, I, in What Flank, I talk about it with the, you know, the guy who came up to him and stopped giving his opinion because he bought tickets for England yeah, and he felt yeah, he was yeah, able to yeah, tell yeah. me about it. And I just said to him, you know, what do you do? And I said, well, you're shit at your job. He said, you can't say that. So I fucking can. You've just told it to, that, said that to me. I, do you know what I did? I went through a phase of doing that. Uh, and people would come up and go, oh, you probably don't remember this, but I met you 10 years ago in this thing. And you walked past me. And I, and I used to go, how the hell <laughs> do you think I'm going to remember that? <laughs> but then what I meant, that goes back to that moment of interaction. And all I do is just lie now. I go, do you know what? I, 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 God, how are you? Yeah, yeah. How are you? Give him that moment. Because trying to defend everything. But sometimes when people say stuff, I was on stage doing some stuff for... Um, an old podcast we did, and the... Uh, oh, I remember that. Is that when the guy came up for a yeah, photo? Yeah, 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 called you the Sea World. Yeah, yeah. And was like, where well, you see, you see, you this, you see. And I went, and he was, right, that's cool. I went, I'm not going to shake your hand. And no, why exactly, is that? Yeah. You, you know, you fucking love it. I was like, 
No, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. Why would you possibly think, oh, well, you bloody love it? I don't. You've just yeah. called me a C-U-N-T. Like, what, what, what were you thinking was going to happen? Um, so I don't... I'm, I mean, obviously, you guys are on a whole level of kind of, of, of different fame, really. I mean, just... So now you feel better. Sorry to go oh, back yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. And I think it is a it's, a... it's a constant thing. It's not like you ever just get... That's it. You're done. No, you, it's a constant you, work in progress. I, I think you have to, but you can adapt it to so many different elements of your life. Yeah, and, and actually, but I think people who explore the mind and do stuff are... are Actually, going to much be much more likely to be successful because it translates to so many areas. Like we, you know, we talked about you buy a golf simulator, you do this, you get this, you do everything else, you buy the nice bike for your riding. If I told you you could use your mind, you'd be better at all of this stuff. Well, Most you, people don't do it because they shy away from it. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. some of the messages we've come up with. Um, yeah, I mean, the cool thing was that, like, in this, the one thing I would say from this whole lockdown period again and not not doing too much, and a lot of people working from home, is that randomly I was I was in the park and bumped into a lad who I'd known since I was three. Hadn't probably seen him for about eight or nine years. And uh, I said, you're right, man, how you doing? Da, 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 da. And uh, he said, yeah, you know, I said, we'll go for a walk one, one evening if you want, because he's, he's, he's got two kids. And I said, well, after the kids have gone to bed, we'll go for a walk. So we, and we've been doing that like once a week. And similar thing, like you see someone you haven't spoken to for years and yet you just catch straight up with yeah. But it was quite funny. He he said to me uh, just the other day. He said, uh, "You're so much more confident and outgoing than you ever were at school." And I've, I put that back to the work you've done yourself. The work you've done through that. Yeah, I mean, both, you're both saying it in different in different ways. Actually, um, I want to just touch on. I know we talked to you for a little while. There's so much I could talk to you about. Is there? You talked about crazy fans and, and the fame. Um, you got any real kind of mad moments with? Because I know social media now. People, you said people are prying and everything. But are there any sort of things that you think now, look back on, and just think, "Oh my god, I can't yeah. believe that happened to me." Some yeah. mad. Like I remember uh, somebody, somebody showing us um, their 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 kids, and they'd named them after us. So this, this this one's Oliver, and this one's James. And that James was a good looking one, wasn't he? <laughs> he was a moody one. Yeah. He was, really moody, he was yeah. the edgy one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the I would say the no, the one that really like I've seen people like with my face tattooed on their back. Wow. That was something Yeah. But after, I, was, I think I think after you see that though, and like like with the with these these two guys being named after us, I think that is so cool. Yeah. That, that, it's a compliment. Yeah, exactly. exactly that someone's taken one that they've convinced their partner to do it, but also, um, but also the fact that, and like, like the tattoos and stuff like that, that is, it's not something I would do. No, I don't think for anybody. No, but at the same either. time, for, to have that impact on somebody is so, it's so cool. It's such a great thing that to think that we've actually been able to influence someone's, you know their day or their life or whatever like that to be able to have that that input i think is really really special has anyone ever got confused and thought you actually were wizards because you know some people can't like remember in friends dr Rachel Ramora, that yeah, woman yeah. thought joey was a surgeon yeah. Yeah. has anyone actually got like doesn't know that it's not real or or you get some... some people who think that um you know do you believe in magic and i said no it's a it's just trickery isn't it no and <laughs> no you, you, you i wanted to say to them have you ever seen a real flying broomstick yeah or, and, but I think if I said that, she'd probably just say, well, I'm a muggle. Oh, I think, I think that, that would be, really? I, I think that's, yeah, so. That is, see, maybe that, maybe we are all muggles. Maybe that is maybe, the problem. Maybe there is something going on, but there's, there's the story, isn't well, there? There's definitely the, something uh, going on. I'm just not sure it's not, it's magic at this <laughs> yeah. point in time. I mean, there's, there, there is a story of a lady who went to King's Cross Station with her kids and they ran at the platform, like. The barrier and it didn't go through. Didn't go through and tried to. Take it, take it to a lawsuit against them, and they. I think, I think the response was just. So the story goes. Not. So the story goes, but I can imagine someone actually doing it. Yeah, of course. It was the same way as those people who, um, you know, the old thing in America where McDonald's cups, coffee cups, are covered in, you know, this morning this is a hot drink, this is a hot drink, be careful, it's a hot drink, because <laughs> yeah. um, some person bought ordered a coffee, spilled it themselves, burnt themselves, and then sued McDonald's for not labelling it properly, you know, or someone <laughs> bought a box of cigars, insured okay. them for a load of money, and then smoked them, and then claimed the insurance money back, and the insurance company then got him arrested for arson. <laughs> in, uh, just stuff like that, like the, the never, the never-ending cycle the of the loopholes. Yeah, um, mate. I, I listen. I find this stuff so, so interesting. I mean, obviously, with what you guys have done with Harry Potter, it is you know the books and the movies are such a magical moment for kids, even for adults. You know, I, I went on Celebrity Mastermind, won it. Top, top, you know, uh, Good, great Christian. performance that as well. Right? Thank yeah, you, I appreciate great, that. Great, people, you knew more than I did, mate. People were, <laughs> people were like, the amount of messages I got for that was just shocked that I wasn't a meathead. And I was like, I hopefully at this point I am a meathead, <laughs> but slightly, you know, disproved that I've got something more about me than just going, oh, yeah, wait. Yeah. And uh, but anyway, so we, so we, so we did that. But I, I just wondered, 
because it's being rediscovered all the time. Do you fer- feel permanently typecast by these roles? Do you think you'll ever escape them? Do you want to escape them? Has it affected what you do now? I can't say I'll... I don't think we'll ever get out of that thing of we are from the films. I think that, that will... That, yeah, that, that probably will be there. But on the same token, then, if we can make that work for our advantage in other ways in terms of, like, like we really want... We're in the process of talking about doing a travel show and hopefully when we can travel, um, and stuff like that. So I think if that benefits in that way, that's not a bad thing. And, you know, there's some people who get typecast for a lot less roles, for a lot lesser, um, like it could be a one film thing. And I think we've had a great impact. And I think the good thing about playing good is, is that people always perceive us as good, yeah. <laughs> good guys, yeah. which is nice because we've been out. Yeah, we've, we've been, been at, at the, the bar with, I can remember I was, a couple of years ago, I was at a bar with Tom Felton who played Malfoy. And this guy came over and he was like, he said to me, he's like, can I buy you a drink? I was like, yeah, thanks. Looked at Tom, he's like, not you though, you're a dick. <laughs> Tom was like, <laughs> like, he's the nicest kid you'll ever meet as well, Tom. He's a really is, good I, guy. I, so. that, that is the problem with you know, these actors. Do you remember Joffrey from, from yeah. um, uh, Game of Thrones? Game of Thrones? Yeah. He, he, he quit, but he quit acting because he was hammered. Yeah, just hammered into the fact that, that, that you know... that Because he was so good at his job. So he, good yeah. at being evil. Yeah. An arsehole that, that he was sick of getting abused the whole time. And even if you said, you know, if Tom Felton was here, I know I think Chloe, my wife, has, has met him and was like, he's a lovely guy or I met him when he was younger. I've never met him, but even I would be like, he's such a little rat. Like, <laughs> he's, like, he's like somebody that if I was, you know, like he's an academy kid, yeah. I would have been like, fuck it, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. jog on, mate. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but if that's just a natural reaction. But unless someone's actually done that in person, not you, mate. You're a dick. <laughs> It happens, like people take it. People do take it to the end. Yeah. And like, oh, it's, no, it's real. It is like that is exactly how people are. But I remember when we just finished filming, we did a, a drive around Europe in a thing called the Wacky Rally. So you buy a car for like ninety quid, and there's loads of cars who do this this trip from Lille to Barcelona, and it goes all through Germany and northern Italy and places. Is this still going on? When, when I, think, our I think they still do it. Probably, they probably do, yes. This I'm would be 2010. Like and we, so there was my mate, myself, and Rupert Grint. We did one car, and James and his pal did another car. And I remember rocking up in the middle of this tiny, sleepy northern Italian village um, to get some to get some food and stuff like that. And uh, I was driving. My mate was asleep, so Rupert was like, go on, I'll go in there. And he went into this sleepy little place. And this is when the Pottermania is, is massive. Like, but, but what's the film? But it would have been, it would have been in between the, the seventh film and the eighth, and the eighth oh, film. Oh, right. Yeah, so it was... and, uh, and so Root, Root goes into this, this little tiny little convenience store where they probably get three people in a day or something like that. And uh, he walks out and, you know, with the food. And there's this girl who's probably about 15, just like stood there in just absolute disbelief that you've got... You've got, that you've got. My friends will never believe Yeah, that. she's like, she's, she just stood there. She's just seen, you know, in her eyes, like Ron Weasley's just walked out. You've got George Weasley driving a car that's shaped like a lifeboat. And then, and then we're off into the distance, into the house. It was like, stuff like that was brilliant. But, that, but can you see what the, the, the magic that you touch people's lives with, the, the, the happiness that it brings people? I think it's so special when you see that. And I have it in a very minor level when you meet young fans or young kids who are sh- visibly shaking and don't know what to say. And you're like, you know, I've never been that excited for anything in my life or yeah, met yeah. anyone. But to see the reaction, happiness, I think it's, a, it's such an amazing power and thing to, to, to bring. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think, and again, I think that's from, you've probably, you've, I mean, I'm sure you got it yourself, from going to different places for a certain period of time. Yeah. You see how, like when you were in Japan, did you see that difference as well? Yeah. So you learn how to react with people's, well, how, how fanatical people are. Yeah, I get it, fanatical yeah it, mate, it's, it's, it's incredible. I mean, what, what kind of stuff have you, have you, did the experience make you want to carry on acting? Is that what you guys have been doing since, since then? Or did it put, have you now diversified into other interests? Yeah, a bit of everything, really. I think the, the main thing, I, what, I, what I really enjoy doing is, I mean, acting is always going to be brilliant to be able to do because it's been great to want to do it. It's, it's, it's just a, a, really, a real joy. So I was able to do uh, some theatre. We did some TV stuff, a film as well last year last year kind of blends into one maybe a bit longer than that now with everything going on um and then yeah a lot of a lot of media stuff as well but then there's the biz- the business side of it so it's almost having a always have a backup plan has always been my my thing because should anything like this happen like what's gone on so there's other interests going in so with like the wizard's chocolate bar there's a mate and a mate and i started into a really it's a really boring concept but basically power plants have got all this ash and they pay out, and our company um, basically take the ash and bag it 
and store it and then sell it to, um, you know, like uh, cement companies. Really boring. Yeah, it's really boring. Yeah, it is. It's, got, it's, got, it's, got, it's got nothing to do <laughs> yeah, with what we're doing. It sounds like a load of cash. But powers, yeah. Exactly, but there's, there, are, there are financial benefits to doing that. So, again, it's just diversifying. They put ash in, do- in dog food as well. I don't know if it's the same ash. I doubt it would be this ash, yeah. Right. I doubt it. Because you always read on the back. Dogs. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're glowing dog. Because <laughs> no, yeah. you read on the back of these things, they put ash. I don't know what ash it is. No. They put ash in it. If you want, if, if you want some dog treats, um, yeah, Power of the Wolf, I'll sort it out. I'll I absolutely want some dog treats. Bertie out. is, he's uh, nine months old and he uh, loves dog treats. I'll sort it out. I was close, talking to Chloe on FaceTime the other day, like a sad little dog dad. And uh, every time I said my name, he couldn't see me, but I haven't seen him for, for a week and he's fucking running around. He thought I was behind the wall. Chloe yeah. was, I was like, don't make me say it because it upsets him. She's yeah. like, do you want a treat? He instantly forgot about me, so that was fine. <laughs> well, what about you? Uh, sorry, I'm talking about dogs now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'd say that it's, 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 um, Something which I never thought, as a, everyone was always like, what did you want to do as a kid? I had no idea what I wanted to do. And I kind of guess that we were always trapped in the mentality of school where you're always told you yeah. get this and then you go to university and then you get a job in an office. Do you know what I mean? Like, and that would never, I knew I definitely didn't want to do that. But so acting, I kind of fell, uh, fell into it. But like I was saying earlier, I then went and studied it and have gone and done more acting since. And then like Oliver th- said, um, we've done, separately as well, which has been quite cool. We've done individual um, stage shows and TV. And yeah, it's still something that we're enjoying. And then the presenting stuff as well, which has come about, which has been great. And I think it's just worked because, again, like when, when we did our, our podcast, we, we stick to, we call it the pub rule. So you don't talk politics, and you don't talk religion, and then yeah. everybody can Which is amazing it. how many arguments you don't get. Yes, <laughs> I, I literally, you know, there's, there's, there's some. There's an. Uh, I can't remember his name, but there is a a point at which the longer an argument goes on online or in person, you talk about Nazis. If there is there is a. It's called some. It's called someone's law. You have to Google it, and it basically means that the longer and longer an online debate goes on or in real life, you bring up Nazis and, and Adolf Hitler. Bizarre. It's it's so true. And you know, I've had this thing, and it goes da 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 da. You act. Uh, you you sound like Hitler. Yeah, so it always goes like that. That's the same yeah. thing with the Nazis did. It is fascinating that it happened. It's, some, it's called somebody's law, and it was basically this professor or someone made this analogy. And it's the same thing. If you, the more you talk about stuff, yeah. yes, there's a variety, but politics comes into it. Religion can, can you know, I think religion to, sh- to shoehorn religion in is quite quite tricky. But to shoehorn Nazis into a conversation because it's of such hard, abomination yeah. and their political views, yeah, it, it is amazing. You have to find out what it is. But it's, oh, wow. we looked Let's into it because yeah. you see it, you see it online with these online arguments. It's it's insane. Um, but then you've done, obviously, both launched the podcast, Normal Not Normal, together. Yeah. Which, uh, what, talk to me about the concept behind that. So when we, after we finished doing our, our first season, um, it was called Double Trouble originally, what we did in, in lockdown 2020. And then after that, we got approached by um, Stable, this production company, and said, would you like, can we collaborate on, on the next season? And we, we started spitballing ideas of, you know, what do, we, what do we get to? And one of the things that we we spoke about, um, from my experience, again, from going through, uh, going to like therapy and stuff, was you're trying to say, it's not, oh, but it's not, it, is, it isn't a normal life. You know what, this isn't normal. You and wouldn't, you, we had a guy on here that said, most men's biggest excuse you have, you wouldn't understand, it's not happened to you, you don't understand, it's not normal. It's, exactly, it, and yeah. Everybody is unique in their own narrative, it doesn't appreciate that, that uh, actually, we're all going through something that's unique to us, so it's not normal to anybody. Exactly, which is exactly it. So that's what, I remember, uh, I remember my counsellor said, well, what is normal anyway? And then that was that was a that was a eureka moment for me, and then so we we started speaking. <laughs> he about left the room. This. I was like a room. Shit, I was like shit, my, yeah. hole in the wall. <laughs> and I then, got an idea. Yeah. Get cured. <laughs> and then and then so we were literally just like going through going through that, and we said, well, let's just speak to different people what their normals are, um, because and I think that's what's been really engaging with a lot of people. Our listenership is that they've listened to it and said, actually, yeah, my normal is not what next door is doing, even though you've got similar interests, similar experiences. Everyone's got something else going on, and that's what we try, want to try and break down. And we were chatting with um, uh, Cameron Jordan, who's um, the uh, defensive tight end for the uh, the New Orleans Saints, and he you could tell he was a university graduate, wasn't he? Because he said, "Well, the definition of normal is a." Um, you know, he, he literally <laughs> I did not out. expect a tight end to come out with he that. Came out with all this like really. Well, stuff. because he he is he could legally qualify as a lawyer. He's a lawyer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> amazing. He, just, he, just, he did everything but pass the bar, pretty much. And he was uh, so he was he came out with that, and we're like, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Like it's just what you perceive someone's commonality is, and I think that's a very, I suppose, in terms, it's probably a lazy thing. What has happened over generations, over here, everywhere else, is just oh, the norm. 
like the norm is okay you could say the norm is a nine to five but it's not the same as when you get home it's not the same as whatever you've got going on in your work life and it's just that's the cool that's what we've tried and get into speaking to different people i mean when you when you were uh, on as well talking about your norm in professional sport that's obviously going to be a lot different to you know um uh, like a, an eco activist or something mm. like that. It's very, very different. But the good thing, as I say, the good thing about it is, is just having the responses from a lot of people who get in touch. And like there's one who's a nurse who's been working, you know, however many hours treating everything that's going on right now. And she said, just listening to that has actually recentered what she's going through, because that is her normality at the moment. And it's quite nice to see that that's not a big. Obviously, it's a massive thing what she's doing, but it's not the be-all and end-all for her right now. So it's, 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 it is really cool being able to do that. Is there anything else in the pipeline you guys want to develop together, or is a podcast enough? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the first time I've seen him in months. Isn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. Since we're in Germany. Isn't it? <laughs> exactly. um, at the moment, yeah, at the moment, because of all the lockdown and everything like this, it is, that's predominantly it. But we have got, obviously, we've got a travel show in development. Amazing. Which we've got people, like, it's, it's really far down the line, but it's that go back to the dog now i'm a dog person so it's like yeah. let me off the lead let me go yeah um so then that's in the that's in the pipeline so hopefully that can get going and then but then we were talking about the other day is if you go and shoot a travel show you don't want to date it with everyone in masks and all yes. that kind of stuff and so we'll see what comes of that um and then we did a pilot for a show in germany last year and that's going to be going to it's going networks to look at and it's been in a couple around. of weeks it's a cool so. concept really it was in a sense it's there's uh there's a set of twins and one literally convinced his brother we could go on a massive crime spree you're my alibi so it's like we're the bad well, guys like pretty much so Would you, have you ever played the bad guys before in anything not to that degree like they're pretty you know pretty evil sex drugs rock and roll there that's kind of what they're at and um, sounds like they, my autobiography should have been <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, it absolutely wasn't harry potter lying down and Talking shit is what it should have been called. <laughs> but, I mean, it was, it was cool just like going around. Um, Did I mention my method actor? So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, amazing. Yeah. So we filmed that in. Um, that. So we filmed that over in in Hamburg, which was one of the only times this last year that we actually got to go oh, away. Wow. But it was nice going there and seeing how other people were dealing with you know everything else going on and just getting on with it. Are you, but that, sorry, Karen. I was going to say that was interesting doing a film in Germany because it was German efficiency of how it was done. Whereas in, I was telling my friend who's a, a quite a high AD now in in the UK scene and I was saying like how over there my call time was seven uh, no I was told oh, well, you probably won't be needed until the evening so like say six o'clock is when we'll be on set so I was expecting them to say so if you could come in at one o'clock then you'd be ready which is how it would be over here and they were like so we'll pick you up at five in the evening and I was like you sure yeah yeah so you got the whole day off oh, <laughs> I love that okay that, that'll work and it worked really well so it was nice having a different I filmed um, a, doing things. I filmed a, a advertisement for Volkswagen with a, a female techno DJ called Ellen Alien in Germany. Same thing. We know we're going to have you here. You've got the day off here. You're going to come in the evening. It's amazing. Over here, we make such a kerfuffle out of yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to be here. And they're like, we may call you. Yep. You may need you. Which, well, you either know or you don't know. And you just know that it's not like this meticulous planning going on. Yeah. One thing I want to pick up was, so you have you become a full method actor now? I wouldn't say full method. I just get into it. Fine. A lot, a lot easier. I, I've... I'm not as embarrassed by it by as I when I first started it, it you get a bit embarrassed if you're um, like Daniel be, Day Lewis, you know, becoming a cobbler because yeah, I'm not, yeah. I'm not, I'm not fine, that, not at all. But it's more more of the lines of if if I know I'm doing something and I've got to be very, if I'm doing a scene and it's got to be very moody, I'll just be moody fine. from mm. start to finish. But everyone should be aware of that and do you have I'll, a little card that says i'm a method actor because i remember on a plane and this kid was making a boatload of noise and was like saying and he and he was saying he could see things out of the plane and i remember like saying oh, i can see a cow i can see a cat he just repeat everything i said i was like messing with him and then after a while he's like banging the, the chair and, and then i was just laughing and the woman just passed the card so it's like hello my name's johnny and i'm autistic and stuff and i was like yeah. ah, shit. <laughs> Um, I just wonder if you have to have like a method actor card no, like, to say oh, I, I might be a bit of a dick today, but it's because I'm this. Yeah. No, I don't. I, I don't take it to like you oh, still fine. you still stay in lane as it were. Well, but okay, you, fine. Um, but then like there was one whenever I'm doing so this one stage show I did, I was playing a guy from the north. He was a, actually a real a real person, and he was from Blythe in Newcastle. So I actually I just happened to be on a stag do in Newcastle, but then I stayed after that to go to Blythe, and hung around a pub and just listened to people's accents. Oh, really? Got a sense of... 
that kind I of love thing, that. which I, love that. I wouldn't have done before. But then after doing that, I felt a lot more... But that's like preparation in anything, isn't it? It's like doing the stuff like what, you know, me going through you guys' Instagram, me reading about stuff in the bio in a smaller extent. I can, I can understand doing that. I just wondered, on any of the movies, were any of the more well-known well actors like that? Anyone um, that would just assume this kind of fool? I don't know. I don't know if they were that much in... May they they may have been I'm not too sure. But you didn't see no, it. I remember, actually, although although tell I remember when we were filming the Battle of Hogwarts scene, um, and it was when Voldemort has the big, when they, they Harry isn't dead and he yeah. jumps out, and Voldemort's like got his whole heart, his whole army behind him, and I remember walking onto set, um, and Ray Fiennes was there, and he had like the whole Voldemort apart from the dots around his nose. Yeah. He was just there and he just had his teeth in and he just smiled the most menacing, most menacing smile. I was just like, he's, I think, I don't know if he, I think he's in it. Right really? Now, okay. I, I, I didn't know, but obviously yeah. he's, apparently he's, he's But like then that. we've seen it both, like we've seen it both ways. So there's, there's that aspect and it's people can stay in it and other things I've done since you've seen actors stay in it the whole time. And other people, like when we did the, the fifth film with Amelda Staunton, yeah. and she's playing yeah. Umbridge, and she is the nicest person you could ever meet. Like, what an incredible performance from someone, because she is hateable. Well, that's yeah. from yeah. start yeah. to finish. It was literally, so there's a scene when, I don't remember the exact scene, but I know that we were talking. It was a school scene. Well, there's something going with uh, with her and Oliver and myself. Because yeah, when you two quit, isn't it? That's you right, like yeah, fly, yeah. You know, you're like we're, we we want to make a, sh a run of it, the, the shop, and we're, we're sacking this That's stuff it, yeah. off. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. right. So as we're just about to film that one, we were having a nice chat about whatever cricket, it was. But I remember cricket, having, isn't it? She's a massive cricket. Yeah. Player. But we were having a great chat, and then literally the director yelled action, and literally she did that. <laughs> Or whatever the, the yeah giggle. yeah yeah, and she was horrible. Ah. I was literally like, I think that's the take they use. Because I'm literally so taken. Really? Because <laughs> you've seen Leonardo DiCaprio. There's a sequence from Wolf of Wall Street, where they're down at three, two, one, and then he just got, comes to life. It's fascinating to see that. I mean, I've never obviously I've never been in that um, that situation. But I've always wanted to go into acting. I think if you need a security guard, a bouncer, a tree, <laughs> um, you know, uh, anonymous crowd member number five, thug six, I could potentially be be that uh, thing. But I, I've never seen that that stuff. So I wondered about it. It's yeah, fascinating, yeah, isn't can, it? I mean, I remember asking um, Julie Walters on the last film because uh, there's a scene when James is uh, laid out on the floor in the Great Hall. And I just said, uh, and like the script said, George crying like um, unconsolably. And I just said to, I asked Julie, I said, what, what's the best way to do that? And she said, the best thing to do is to get into that mindset before you leave your trailer, your dressing room, whatever, and just go straight to set. And if you, if someone will try and talk to you, just ignore them. You can always say afterwards, sorry about that. Yeah. You know? uh, but if they're working here, they should understand what you're doing. Fine. Uh, so I did that. I got all the way to set. And then this makeup girl came up and went, hi, how you doing? And it just blew a load of eucalyptus in my face. So then you like tears <laughs> of streaming down. Um, but again, that took like, I don't know, three or four takes to do that. And then it's done. Um, but then afterwards you go and see people. You're right, mate. Yeah, oh, sorry about that. I was oh, fine. And again, they're just, yeah, I, mean, I know. I love yeah. that. I so, love that. But if guys, if, if people want to find out more about both of you, you've both got obviously your Instagrams. Are they as, as obvious as they would be? Or are they? Yeah, Oliver underscore, I think, Phelps. Who's taken Oliver yeah. Phelps not underscore? I don't know. Some well, some someone took, gets tagged in loads of random yeah. stuff. I know someone took James Phelps, James underscore Phelps. So I'm James underscore Phelps photos, photos, or photos, something, yeah, something, yeah, like, something yeah, random yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, because someone nicked it. Because so. I could, I was trying to tag you in those the, the podcasting the other day. I was like, how is it? Oh, yeah. complicated it so much. <laughs> you know, you can get them back actually if the, if you find out they're inactive and they don't use it. I I used to have James at James Hask. And someone had James Haskell, and he was some bloke who never used it before. Just contact someone on Instagram. They were like, "Yeah, just took it off him." Oh, really? They're like, you're not using it, Chief. I'm having that. Be yeah. seeing you. So <laughs> never mind whoever that was. He had a picture of a Chelsea thing on it. I don't care about football. I'm lucky. Um, and obviously, your podcast, Normal Not Normal, available on all podcasts. And channels. Yeah, wherever, yeah, wherever you get your, your podcast from, and on on YouTube as well. Um, yeah, it's been it's been good fun. We've got some. Uh, I think we've got, we're going to try and we're trying to get to about twenty to twenty five interviews on this season. We're not too sure yet. We're not quite as more laid out as you are doing so many yeah. in one go. It's, it's, it's only idea. because of, I think, just the organisation to do it. It's taxing, you know, like doing four of them a day because yeah. you've got to emotionally be on. Like, you know, like the acting part. It's like I sit down in between and at night I'm exhausted just and then you've got to write the next yeah. questions and mm -hmm. go on the, the phase. I know what you think, it's probably... 
It doesn't seem like that rambling was actually planned, but it was. But listen, guys, thank you so much for doing it, Oliver and James Fells. I really appreciate you, you coming down. I'm Jace Haskell. You've been listening to What a Flanker, the podcast. Don't forget to pick up my book, What a Flanker. It's available as a paperback. Uh, remember, this is a YouTube show as well. You can share, subscribe, and get this podcast on all your regular channels, lads. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Thanks very much. much. Cheers, mate.